What's up guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Dex. I'm your host Caleb. Today we're going to be doing exactly what the thumbnail suggests. Upgrading my most powerful casual list, Yidris the Milstrom Wielder. I've had this deck list put together forever and today we're going to be taking 12 cards out and putting 12 cards in. Now if you guys did want a full deck list of this commander, I will leave it linked here and in the description down below. You can go watch this and then watch the deck list or watch the upgrades after this because what we're going to be doing in this video is I will go over the synopsis and how this deck does does win the game very briefly, but I mostly just want to talk about the 12 cards I'm adding and the 12 cards I'm taking out and then going over why I'm making those changes. That way, maybe when you guys go through and upgrade your list, you can kind of use this reasoning whenever you're trying to upgrade it. What cards do you take out? What cards do you put in? How do you know if you're making the deck list better, right? These are very important questions when we go through and upgrade the decks that we love. So I'm going to try to answer those and explain my ads and cuts as best as possible. Now, let's get into it. First, let's shout out those patrons. Irrelevant, you rock. If you guys want a free $15, you can click on that whatnot link in the description down below. Additionally, if you guys just want to like, comment, and subscribe, I really appreciate it. Now, let's get into what Yidris does. We're going to keep this short and simple. We want to attack with Yidris. We give all our spells Cascade, and then this is a wheel deck. So we're trying to get something like a Liliana's Caress on the battlefield, and then wheel, causing our opponents to discard a ton of cards and taking a ton of damage. It's basically like a four-color Nekusar, right? But that just makes it a lot more powerful because we have access to green. And then additionally, Yidris Cascade ability is just broken. The ability to cast two spells whenever you cast one is just not okay, especially when you know what you're doing. Because you can cast a two CMC spell and almost guarantee that you're going to cascade into one of your tutors that is going to get you the exact card you need to start winning the game. So that's the goal of this deck. I have had it to where we win turn five or six and we've done over 40 damage to the table. It's just disgusting. So let's get into what we're adding to this deck and what we're taking out to make it more efficient. The first two things that we're going to add is an offer you can't refuse and saw it coming. Now this has historically been a deck that I don't run any counter spells in except for your Glenalindra effects and even your Siren Storm Tamer effects because cascading into counter spells seems really bad. Why I like saw it coming is because it's 3 CMC so it dodges any of our important spots which is the 2 and 1 drops. Those are where our tutors are and those are where our important cards are. So being at the three spot, that's fine. We're probably less likely to cascade into it. And then additionally, we can foretell it. In a wheel strategy, foretell is pretty strong because we're constantly discarding our hand. So we don't really always have access to those counter spells. That's why I like the Glenalindra and Siren Storm Tamer effects in this deck. Now, an offer you can't refuse, a little different here. This Excuse me. This is a counter spell, but it's a counter spell that we can easily cascade into. Why am I justifying it here? It's super efficient at one mana, and if we do cascade into it, we can have it counter itself and net two treasures, allowing us to cast more spells and keep cascading, if that makes sense. So it's not the greatest if we cascade into it, but it's not nothing either, so we're going to add it into the deck to give us more interaction. The next three cards we're going to add to this list are going to get lumped together, and you'll see why. We're adding Razor Face. Orcish Bowmasters, and Blood Chief's Ascension. And right out of the gate, you'll notice that one of these things is not like the other. These two are new, this one's been around forever. So why are we testing it now when it hasn't been put in previous iterations of the deck? The answer to that is simple. It has been in other previous iterations of the deck, but I found it hard to get online. As soon as you play this card, your opponents are not going to start attacking themselves to turn it online for you. So you have to do it yourself. And I was unable to reliably do that unless I had a Keteric Parasite on the battlefield. Now we're adding two more Keteric Parasites to the deck in the form of Razor Face over here and Orcish Bowmaster. So now hopefully we can more reliably get this thing to pop and start doing the broken thing where we're gaining a lot of life and dealing a lot of damage to our opponents whenever they're discarding cards or whenever their creature dies, whenever they do anything and it enters their graveyard, right? Blood Chief's Ascension, very broken if you can get it off. You just have to get it off. Now this is one card that I'm watching very closely, right? If I can't reliably get it off with adding these new cards in, it's going to end up getting cut again. Very simple, right? And then these two are just way more efficient than some of the cards we're already running, so we're going to cut those, and it's an easy swap in, swap out kind of scenario. The next card we're going to add is Delayed Flat Blast Fireball. This is basically a one-sided board wipe whenever you cast it from exile. We're casting it from exile with Cascade, and then it's going to go to our graveyard where we can cast it again. This card is just too flexible not to include in this deck, and it's going to wipe out a lot of our opponent's boards and a lot of problems 
problem this deck has or can have sometimes is connecting. So being able to take out their entire board, very useful and we're definitely going to use that here. The next card we're adding to this deck I'm super excited about, it's Filter Out. What's going to happen here is with our Windfall, Whispering Madness, and Dark Deal effects, they all make our opponents discard cards and draw cards equal to the amount that they discarded, except for Dark Deal's minus one, right? So we're filling up our opponent's hands by bouncing all of their non-land permanents back to their hand and then we're making them discard it, making them take more damage off of our Liliana's Caress effects and more damage off of our Cataract Parasite effects because they're drawing more cards and discarding more cards and additionally, we just wipe their entire board of all of their non-land permanents. Now, this does it for us as well, but we're not taking a bunch of damage and we're happy to wheel into a new hand and hopefully wheel again, right? That might just straight up kill our opponents. That's how you get to the point where we can deal over 40 damage to our opponents in one turn. Additionally, it is very useful. Say we run out of cards to cast. It's actually kind of solid to return cards back to our hand. That way we can recast them to keep cascading and keep having a strong storm turn. Now the next cards we're adding, admittedly not super interesting but super impactful, we are going to add Bloom Tinder here and Fanatic of Ronas. Just two mana dorks that tap for four mana. Again, really useful. The next cards we're adding to this deck, admittedly pretty boring, but pretty impactful. We're going to add Birds of Paradise, Delighted Halfling, and Ignoble Hierarch. Now, there's a reason these weren't previously in the deck, because you're probably looking at these like, yeah, those are staples. Why weren't those in there? And the reason for that is, I thought the more one drops we had, the less likely you are to cascade into those tutors that we have in the one spot. Which is very true, right? We're less likely to cascade into something like a Vampiric Tutor now, and we might just get a Delighted Halfling whenever we cast a 2-drop. But I've decided that's worth it because we also get the ability to have more 1-drops, and having more 1-drops means we can more efficiently cascade into our 0 CMC stuff, like our Wheel of Fate, our Tutor, and our Bribery Effect. These are all very powerful cards that can win us the game as easily as something as a Vampiric Tutor. So the trade-off is worth it here because we're not only getting a more efficient way to cascade into our zero drops, we're also getting a more efficient starting hand by being able to play a mana dork turn one. Simple trade-off there. Now, let's move on into the cut. The first two cuts are kind of sad to go, but had to go, right? We're getting rid of Jinka Taxis and also Urabrask. I loved the thought of these two, and they did do what I wanted them to do. The only problem is this deck is so fast and efficient, I could not reliably flip these guys before I won the game. That's actually the problem here. These things were just too slow for the deck they're in, so I had to say goodbye, I had to cut them, and we're just going to move on and we'll miss them. The other two cards we're cutting are Raider's Wake and Fell Spectre. These are two of the discard effects that dealt damage. I just swapped them in for the Razor Face and the, um, you know, Orcish Bowmasters. More efficient. Sorry, they're gonna go here. The next card getting an axe here is Milstrom Pulse. We're already adding Delayed Blast Fireball to the deck. We're adding an offer you can't refuse, and I saw it coming. So with adding three interaction spells, it's going to be pretty solid just to take one of them out. We're also going to axe Brainstorm storm here. Now there were some five head plays you could do with this set up the top card of your library and you're going to know what you're going to cascade into but it kind of just sucked to cascade into and we're adding three other cards that are going to suck to cascade into so let's minimize that and additionally it's just not a very flashy card. Maybe it's efficient but it's not flashy and I kind of just want to try some new things so it's going to unfortunately get the axe here. We're also going to cut Kaidel here. I love her in the deck and I've tapped her for a ton of mana but nine times out of ten I'm drawing like like two cards and tapping her for two to get my next wheel effect off. So using her to cast a wheel effect just feels bad. I'd rather have something like Bloom Tender or Fanatic of Ronas that consistently taps for four mana. So that's why she's going to get the axe. Another thing getting the axe here is Fabricate. Whenever you're running out of cuts, cut tutors. It makes the deck less consistent, but honestly, we're already running a pretty decent amount of tutors in this deck. We don't need Fabricate here. It was kind of just another copy of Sword of Feast and Famine anyway. Sometimes I would buy or grab Sensei's Divining Top, it can grab Bolas to Citadel, but again, paying three mana to then pay nine mana or pay three mana to then play another three mana, it just doesn't feel great, so it's going to 
get the axe here as well. The next card getting the axe here is Passionate Archaeologist. I just found burning out my opponents with your Keterek Parasite and Liliana's Caress effect was way too efficient that Passionate Archaeologist never did what it was supposed to do in the deck. So whenever you have a card that's not doing what you envisioned it to do, you just cut it out. Additionally, we are going to be cutting Dragon Mage here. Again, just not efficient for the deck. Super high costed. We are having to hard cast this. We got rid of all of our reanimation effects. So having to hard cast this guy and then wait a turn to attack with him just felt bad. So he's going to be a super easy cut. Last but not least, we're cutting Rakdos Signet. I just thought it'd be kind of simple to cut here. We're adding a lot of green creatures that we want to play turn one. So getting rid of our red and black producer seemed like a solid choice. I'm also kind of debating cutting out all the signets and adding the talismans. Being able to pay life to add a certain color to your mana pool and not having to wait a turn to sink mana into it to tap it for two just seems like this is the kind of efficient play that this deck would really want. So I'm probably just going to end up swapping out all the signets all together, putting the talismans in there, but I won't put the Rakdos talisman because that one is getting cut. That's going to do it for all of the ads and all of the cuts, guys. I hope you guys got something from this and you will now be able to upgrade your decks more efficiently. Let me know if this was useless information or this helped you out. Additionally, let me know if you've been smashing people with this deck list as often as I have. I'll leave you with my favorite game winning story. I was playing against a Kalia of the Vast deck. The other two decks I cannot remember, but they long died, right? I was playing against, I think, Alayla and I forget the fourth deck, but anyway, it's me and the Kalia player left. They go ahead and cheat out a Villas Broker of Blood and I just laugh. They have no idea what I'm laughing about, but they're like, okay, pass turn. And then I play Keterek Parasite. What's going to happen here is this is going to force the Kalia player to draw their entire deck, but they're not that worried, right? Because they're like, okay, as long as I draw into Swords to Plowshare, I can just get rid of the Keterek Parasite. But I had Glenelendra on the battlefield and they had just forgotten about it. So they actually do end up drawing the Swords to Plowshare. They cast it. I laugh. I counter it and they just flip the t they don't flip the table but you know what I mean that guy was very considerate he was considering flipping that table we laughed shuffled up had another game but that's my favorite win of this Yidris deck how about you guys leave your favorite wins in the comments down below and with that I will leave you after shouting out these patrons irrelevant chicken salad creator the professional heel excessum you guys rock I hope this helped everybody in their deck building endeavors and I will see you guys in the next one